Barbershop Podcast, episode number 62, coming uh, right at you from Boxo Studio here in Hamilton, Ontario. Ryan Cannon, back in the house, along with Quentin and uh, Jordan. You got, you got the control room stacked tonight, don't you? Yep. It's, it's all good times. It's craziness. Look at that. What are you doing back there? Is it a wrestling match? It's a wrestling match. You didn't let the dog and the cat in at the same no, time? No, anything. no, no. You know, I just got my camera where I liked it. And now it's all been molested. Who cares about those guys? Yeah, we look. are we the before or the after? I don't know. I'm the before, you're the after. <laughs> Thank Definitely. God. Definitely. Thank God. Well, you know what? It's a freezing, freezing cold, freezing, freezing um, whole month of January that we've had here. But uh, the tunes have been hot and heavy and on a regular basis. Each and every week I've had a, uh, a great uh, group of people coming in, uh, be it one person, two persons, three persons, or as we have tonight, the five-person set. Ryan, how do you feel about the five-person set? I love it. You love the five person I love set. It. You know what? It's, it's better when I got helpers. You got it's helpers. Way better when I got helpers. That's <laughs> you for go sure. To, and you got a new. Uh, you got some new equipment tonight. So yeah, we're looking forward yeah, to some Quentin really good some sound. Toys. Well, I, w- I want to introduce who we have in the house tonight. And these are these are guys that I was on from the from the time the show started. I was beating on Danny, and I, I was I was like, I want to have Fry Truck come in here and uh, at Barbershop Podcast. Uh, first time I saw them, I was blown away. It touched every special place in my musical need category. You know, uh, tuneful, soulful, aggressive, passionate, intelligent, uh, the kind of music that uh, the world needs and certainly uh, Hamilton produces on a regular basis. Um, I want to start off with uh, Matt Coleman, who's playing coming in here. And Matt, are you, are, do you play fiddle or do you play violin or a bit of both? It depends on the day of the week. Because <laughs> you got to know that some, some things call for fiddle and some things call for violin. And uh, Carrie Ashworth is coming in, uh, play a little bass and, uh, and join us all in the party. Uh, Dave Promfit, you've, you, 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 you're a big fan of yours. You know, your, Thanks, your No Rush CD uh, was one of the great CDs that came out. And I see it happen, you know, five, ten times a year where there's a CD that comes out. And it's like the people that know know how good it is. And it gets talked about, but a beautiful piece of songwriting. Thanks, and uh, if you get a chance to order uh, his uh, CD, uh, No Rush, please do it. Uh, Danny Medikovic, who, who's a, a fellow where it's not really fair because, you know, you're, you're so damn smart. And you're such a good musician and a songwriter. And you've got a good work ethic. And, you know, if, if anyone was working to try to find any dirt on you, I don't think they'd, they'd really, you know, they'd probably have to work a bit far. But maybe that's why you go to Guatemala. I don't know. Maybe there's a deep, dark secret in South America. I don't know. Oh, my little heroin business on the side. <laughs> yeah, on the heroin. Only could talk about yeah. that. And, and and Linda DeMulo, I was like you would you you've 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 been on the music scene for a long time and I've seen you with almost every instrument in your hand at one point or another. You know, it's like it's it's nice to know that there's somebody who is a you know, passionate about their music and the people who I see you play with let me know that they seem to think that you're pretty good at, at what you do. So I mentioned to the people the people. Everyone here in Fry Truck. Um, Carrie was a bit late, so she's didn't get this this preload. Usually what I do is I ask people about how music discovered them. A lot of people say music isn't something you discover or something that you possess. It possesses you, and you can't shake it. And if it was something that was prevalent in their family, if it was something uh, that's a life force, and obviously it is. Now this week, um, which in the future, if you reference it, is... uh, uh, the 29th of January, 2014, we had, within one day of each other, the Grammy Awards, which is the one day a year that anyone in the rest of the media talks about music, and they don't talk about music. They talk about hats, and they talk about shoes, and they talk about the, the, the stupid bullshit stuff. And Pete Seeger died. And Pete Seeger uh, was a folk musician who was a huge pioneer in political and social music. Um, the idea that music could lead a change in the way people think and the way the people operate. And instead of having the regular let's chat, find out about, you know, if your dad played accordion or not, I want to kind of throw it out to the group. And I want to ask you about how, how music came into your life, but in that perspective. You, you, you write a special kind of music. Tell me about, okay, and I'll start with you, Danny, only because, you know, I can look at you and the camera at the same time. But, you know, music is obviously, you, you, you've got the opportunity to, to, to work in computers. You, 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 you don't need music. 
but clearly you need I, music. I, I do. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that I don't need. Well, you music. don't. You, you don't need it as something that you don't have. You don't have any other skills. Yeah, that's true. I need the day job. It's more the other <laughs> way around. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know if I'm going to answer your question in the way that you intended. There's Kevin, no intention. But, uh, but uh, you know, I write music because I, I have to. Right? It's just it's a thing that that comes out. I've been fortunate enough that. Um, for more than the last 10 years, I've had a job where I can take a, a break at almost any point in the day and pick up a guitar and, and write when the inspiration is there. And even when I haven't been able to do that, I've sung messages into my answering machine or, or, or uh, worked in factories and banged on the machines and saw that the, that the wires, the guide wires on the styrofoam cup machine were tuned differently and ended up writing a song that way. And so it's, um, I think if you're a writer, it's just something that you carry with you throughout the day. And uh, and it just presents itself, you know, often in the most unexpected times. And I can't really imagine not not doing it. There, it used to be I, the, in public, you know, working in the corporate world for all these years. You kind of your your musician self was your closet yes. personality. You didn't bring it out at the boardroom table because um, it might have been perceived as a flaky kind of you know hobby or absolutely. something like that. But I think that's really changed. I I know over the years I just I started to bring my gu guitar out to corporate events. And uh, people loved it. Everybody immediately dropped their corporate persona and they gravitated to the guy with the guitar. And it literally transformed the room every single time. And it just uh, taught me that uh, people really just want to have a beer and relax and, and enjoy again, some music. But again, isn't that what we're talking about with what Pete Seeger is able to do with a song? Say he's talking about a, a social or a political situation and someone is affected by it and they feel it in the song. And then they ask someone, is that real? Did that really happen? I say, oh yeah, that's about when you know thugs came in and this happened and so and so did this. So, you know, to to have that face, or as the Japanese call it, you know, it's a, the face. You know, it's a very corporate thing where you, the music has has the the ability to penetrate that, and it, and it gets passed. And I think that that's that's a good example. Dave, how about you? Like music, and as a writer, you know, for me as a writer, I have to discipline myself. Things come and go. They flip in and out very quickly. So it, I'm not disciplined enough to, to get that. Do you find writing a chore, or is this something that is... No, it's never, ever been a chore. Uh, I don't do it. Like Dan's a really prolific writer. Like I used to write like Dan does, but I, that was when I was a teenager. I was lucky enough to be in a band with Gene Champagne and Mike Treblecock. And, uh, the Monday Nuns. The Monday Nuns. And they, were, and, and they were raucous. We were fairly raucous. <laughs> but had some real profound lyrics. Yeah. Uh, but we just, we wrote all the time. And now I just, I don't, I hardly ever sit down with the intention of writing a song. And I, I don't play guitar as much as I used to because I work six days a week. That's a different story. Um, but typically when I write a song, it, it just comes to me and it's pretty much done. I've got to work on the lyrics a little bit to make them good but uh does something grind your axe and you feel i need to write a song about this or do you yeah sometimes i'll get ideas like that <laughs> lyrical ideas and i'll jot them down and then sometimes i'll get a musical idea uh, chords and i'll stick them together so what about you carrie did you come you know from a musical place or is this something that you and your your badass friends kind of fell in love with <laughs> I do not have that. <laughs> it's easy to dig up dirt on you, Carrie. <laughs> no, you can't hide I've, from Google. I've played for a long time, and uh, uh, when I don't play, I don't feel good. So I just I'm gonna play until I die. It's therapy, you know, yeah. and it's like, and, and people don't That's understand this. Same with an artist. When someone looks and goes into an artist's house, and they've got a hundred of their own paintings up there, they say. You know, you need to sell these paintings. Why do you keep painting if you're not selling your paintings and they don't understand that the person needs to, to paint? Yeah. That's what they do. Um, how about you, Matt? Is it... Uh, yeah, uh, I've been playing violin since I was six. Or did seven. you choose it or did your parents say, check this out? Uh, they said, check it out, sort of. They brought me to a lesson and then I said, okay, that looks pretty cool and then stuck with it and... I grew up in a folky house myself, so I was listening, my dad was listening to Seeger and Woody and Arlo and yeah. Stan Rogers and so whatnot, so were all your, this kind of music. Were you different from your friends at that point? Because you're a musician, you're listening to this kind of music, and your friends were totally into something else? Uh, I had musician friends um, um, that I was in the classical scene, actually, first, and then got into the Celtic scene through my friend, uh, Sarah. And 
Um, and then the, the folky stuff kind of came a bit later, going into, as I sort of grew up and in, into high school, into university and stuff like that. So it was sort of like a, I was listening to it a lot as a kid and then came back to it in sort of an early university. Yeah. How about, how about you, Linda? Was, uh, you know, it, it's something that was holistic with you or? Yeah, I think I'm mostly driven by the, ooh, that looks like fun. <laughs> ooh, that looks like fun <laughs> is what I'm driven by. Um, so that is why you have seen me behind most instruments. Yeah. Because you're fearless because you're willing to, to pick it up and try it, right? Well, I think I actually just don't think end game. So, like, you know, band practice, half the band goes out for a smoke. I will grab whatever other instrument I'm not playing because I'm like, ooh, that looks like fun. And then ultimately I do that enough times and then I end up playing that instrument a little something. And, and someone says, sometime. you're really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about the, the – because I remember when a, a couple of people who I really knew and respect said, have you seen Fry Truck? It's like, who? You know, it was like, oh, it's, it's Danny and Dave. And at the time, Mike was playing with you. And it was like, oh, no. And then I saw you at uh, Corktown. And it was like, wow, you know, that's really good. Tell me about how, at, at you know, a certain point to the, the evolution where it is now. But the idea, like, were you, were you all looking to form an, a, a new band? Well, no. Uh, if I may start with this one, Dan. Actually, I, I met Dan. Uh, we were both idiotic enough to enter ourselves into a singer-songwriter contest because the prize looked like it was tasty. A tasty prize of money. And uh, I joined, or signed up for the contest, and I uh, Mike was uh, accompanying me. And I heard Dan come on a few performers before me. And was uh, duly impressed, and uh, and we uh, we weren't. I'd never met you before that at all. I I know Dan's wife from growing up in Binbrook, uh, and then uh, Dan and I got chatting on Facebook, and uh, he suggested that he and Mike and myself should put a band together. And I threw the idea off Mike, and he agreed. So uh, well, everything else just kind of fell into place, did it not? It did. Yeah. And right off the bat, it's like. That's a couple songwriters, and it's nice when you've got a couple songwriters because people are bringing things to the table all the time, right? Did you feel that there was, like, magic? I've been playing with Mike for 25 years, you know, yeah. so uh, I knew that Mike and I would sound really good together. Mm -hmm. I thought we did anyway, and the, with Dan, I thought it was almost instantaneous. <clears throat> I remember the first rehearsal, because I'd never played with Linda as a drummer. I don't know if I'd played with Matt, and I think Carrie got brought in through Linda, right? And um, and I remember throwing out a couple of my songs and and hearing everybody just pick up, you know, start creating parts. And I was I was grinning ear to ear. It was like pure it was. magic. It to was me. literally from ear right from one ear to the other ear. Yeah. It was very silly. Like and, and it's been like that every time we we add a new song, we get uh, I don't know, it just comes together real fast. I like playing with these guys. Great musicians. Actually, you had played with Matt again. I asked Matt to consider joining the band because we was at the library. It was. With uh, Jay Burr and Mike and you and I was oh, just there right, and I right, got yeah. up and I said Matt's got to be there. Both of you physically moved that way a little bit. And uh, so with the fact that what was your first gig like together? What did did it go off as as well as you hoped? Was that at the same? Was this in Hollywood? We opened. Lou asked. Oh, we asked Lou if we could play, and he booked us to open for somebody. And we'd practiced five or six times before that, and then we started the show with ten thousand tires, and we nailed it. Yeah, it's beautiful. I thought we should just stop right there. <laughs> and if you had, you had, had to be your own like A and R guy, and you had to pigeonhole yourself, what, what would you call yourself? What is your music? If someone asked me, Fry Truck, what what are they? Uh, I call it alt, alt country, but it could be Americana, I guess. Americana, so, alt yeah. country, Canadiana, Canadiana, hard folk, yeah. hard folk. I, like I that still think I'm, I've got my songs are a little. Well, some of them are out and out country, and some of them are out and out pop songs. Really, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know. They kind of give a little. Work, so. Yeah, it's it's interesting because people ask, you know, you, there's no attention going in. What kind of song is it? It reveals itself yep. as you write the song. Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to uh, want you to kick off and ask you to maybe play a couple songs for us. You got something in mind? You want to help us? Sure. Get the uh, winter frost off, everyone here. And the frosty oh, yeah. end of January. Barbershoppodcast.com. We got Fry Truck here in the house, and they're going to play something live, something that you can see. And almost every night of the week here in Hamilton. Go out and see some live music. Support the places that support live music. Support the people 
who do this on a regular basis. And if you see Fry Trek, for God's sake, see them. Take it away, guys. She's got a dirty little secret in a dirty little mind. Shine. Yes, she cries for days and days because she's lying when she prays. The little box she's living in is freezing cold, free from sin. She's upside down, Allison Brown. She's got an angel on her shoulder. Something else to blame But she's too afraid to break up So she's painting on her makeup Phony smile to hide her shame It gets harder every time To make it shine Yes, she cries for days and days Because she's lying when she prays She's lying when she prays And the little box she's living in Is freezing cold, but free from sin Yeah, she cries for days and days Because she's lying when she prays The little box she's living in Is freezing cold, but free from sin She's upside down She's Alice Alison Brown. Alison Brown. Oddly enough, when uh, I wrote that song after Fry Truck became a band and was maybe first or second practice, there's a new one I'm writing called Alison Brown. And Matt's eyes lit. I was like, what? That's my wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> As luck would have it. <laughs> well, you know what? It was beautiful live experience. And it's like sitting in here, like the synergy flows through you. Because we are all like we're made of water. And we are all very responsive to sound waves. This is what we are as human vessels. So when you're sitting here as I am, as you should be on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, go out and see some live music. I want to ask each one of you in turn. I'm going to start with you, Linda. What was... Uh, you know, putting you on the spot. What's the best live show you ever went to and why? Or what's the one that's one of the ones that sticks out in your mind? Because I know it's like picking your favorite flavor of ice cream because there's so many. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go maybe with because it was unexpected. I was in Salt Lake City and kind of wandered upon a Bruce Coburn concert where, like, it was like up in the mountains and there was a sun was setting and he happened to play awesome he had a great band with him and uh that was the first standout that came to mind so i'm gonna stick with that yeah that sounds like a good choice how about you danny uh well i could name a whole string of them that were all 
all equally awesome because of the venue. And it was uh, when I was going to, to school at Carleton in uh, in Ottawa, and there was a I don't know if it's still there, but there was an awesome bar called Barrymore's, which was yes. an old theater uh, with the balcony and everything turned into a bar. Um, so I saw Lenny Kravitz there in the Tragically Hip and Lyle Lovett in his big band and B.B. Um, uh, King and Coco Taylor and uh, Leo Kotke. And um, probably my favorite, though, was was Johnny Winter. And um, I was in the front row. How old, what, what year What year Johnny Winter? Oh, man. Roughly. I, uh, era. Let me just think. So, so, so. It was about 89, 88, something okay. like that. Oh. And he played... Um, non-stop for three hours just almost soloed the entire time I remember what every 10 minutes he might sing a verse at, and then step back and just keep willing away and apparently he he left it all on the floor the next night in Montreal he played and he played for 30 minutes apparently <laughs> so I guess <laughs> I guess he, he blew it all on his Ottawa <laughs> yeah, show and, uh, you, you won you won in Ottawa yeah yeah but that was just awesome that would that kicked ass how mm. about you Dave what was one of the ones that kind of sticks out in your mind all these years because people ask you this question on a fairly regular basis sure I, what's I a mean, show that stuck out in your mind huge ACDC <laughs> fan the first time I got to see them I was 15 and that blew me away yeah uh, uh, but um I saw it. my favorite songwriter in the world is Todd Snyder. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's, he's, he should be. Uh, and I went to see him in Buffalo just a few years ago. Kyle Weir took me. And uh, just him and his guitar in a room full of maybe 300 people. And it was just uh, awesome. And I was I, I love feeling jealous of other songwriters. Actually, it inspires me to be better, and I, I'm just very jealous of him. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Carrie, what about you? Okay, well, I should pick, like, Primus or something, but I'm going to have to say, the one that really came to my mind first was uh, Blue Rodeo in, like, yeah. 2000 or something in Ottawa, and they were just so tight and so awesome, and it, I, yeah, and I play a lot of that music, so yeah. that's going to be my pick. Yeah, because I've got a good friend, Craig, Craig Cole Koshal, who said, you know, there's, like, Blue, Blue Rodeo, <laughs> you know, the Blue Rodeo and everything else, you know, and I, I just because he plays rockabilly and a bit of everything, but Blue Rodeo is that wonderful, magical combination of everything, and they get overlooked and tragically hipped a lot, and, and I'm not dissing the hip, they're but they, amazing, they get they put in, but Blue Rodeo is truly, you know, great oh. gift, big, big part in my life, and with you, Matt, who was some a great show that sticks yeah. out in your mind. I think two stand out in my head. One, on, the, on the one spectrum, seeing two alive. Justin Al Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> seeing two alive for the first time. Is that a youth <laughs> joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so two seeing them live yeah. for the first time was amazing. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I went to university in Kingston and seeing uh, Danny Michelle and Sarah Sleen on the same bill. In a soft seater? Did they have a nice little... <laughs> Because a lot of the universities have really nice soft seaters where they put like four or five hundred people, and and that's a really great place for some of you people live in a university town. Like look up the university. There's people who play universities who you will not hear of on a on a regular basis who won't get the radio play, won't get the video play, but like you know that's where you're going to see some mm -hmm. good stuff, it's right? Amazing. Danny Michelle just working the it, Olympic yeah. medal. Yeah, Danny. Danny pretty pretty good, eh? <laughs> He's not bad. <laughs> not bad. One, one of our, another one of our great Canadian treasures for our international listeners and viewers. There's a little more fry truck we're going to throw your way. You guys ready to play another one? Yeah. <laughs> It's been years since anything grew here Longer still since there was anything new here No one's buying stale compromise I can't trust you, well who can I trust? Why has the well been full of rust? Ever since my Harley disappeared We talk, 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 I can't understand Round and round like it's a complex plan If lips were wings we'd never touch down A bottle of love would shine like a silver rock And there's a sea to hold This old shirt pocket There's a bright light burning in a heavenly socket when And it's alright Yeah, love would shine like a silver rock And there's a sea to hold This old shirt pocket Socket and it's all right. She's gone. 
coming round tonight She's coming round tonight well, I put up, you shoot down You used to put out when I come around But your shoulder's getting colder every day machines in the barn It didn't used to be like this When we could set things right with a simple kiss But the flowers off the bloom And it's complicated But love could shine like a silver rock If there's a seed of hope This old shirt pocket There's a bright light burning in a heaven of socket When it's all right Shirt pocket, there's a bright light burning in a heavenly socket, and it's all right. Shirt pocket, there's a bright light burning in a heavenly socket, and it's all right. Yeah, love can shine like a silver rock, but there's a seed of hope. This old shirt pocket, there's a bright light burning in a heavenly socket, and it's all right. She's coming round tonight. She's coming round tonight. She's coming round tonight. Coming round tonight Fried Truck on BarbershopPodcast.com You can't get this anywhere else Week after week, in and out Hamilton, Ontario is blessed With a plethora of incredible musicians, storytellers, and we get them here each and every week, and we get to bring them to you, and I am so <coughs> glad you're supporting us, and I hope you support Hamilton Music, and uh, each and every one of you, again, thank you for coming into the studio. I want to um, start with you, Matt, this time, and I'm going to ask you who, if anyone, in the last year, does anyone new come into your field of vision musically that's kind of made you pay attention that you would say to someone, you should check these guys out. Um, I'm fairly obsessed with Simone, is her name? Simone, Simone Schmidt. Um, Simone Schmidt. Uh, for $100. And now she's got a couple new bands, um, the highest order uh, from Toronto, alt country. Really, really, really good stuff. Um, we played been, with them one time. That's right. That's how I would, discovered her. Yeah. yeah. $100, yeah. Oh, $100, yeah. Yeah, and uh, fairly obsessed right yeah. now. And, 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 and for those of you out there, you have to understand, even if, like for me, I've been in this for 20 years, and on a daily basis, someone goes, do you know so-and-so? And it's like, no. And it's like, well, they've been in Hamilton, and they've been great for 20 years. It's like, it, for every person you know, there's 10 that you need to be made aware of. So yeah. this is why I'm doing this. So if you get a chance, you know, Simone discover it. Simone Schmidt, discover a new artist, you know, besides Fry Truck, which we're bringing to you right here. <laughs> Carrie, what about you? Okay, can we pick artists that we play with? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I so knew you okay, were well, I do think that. <laughs> I think everybody should uh, check out JP Riemann's last CD because yeah. I love it and it's great. Yeah, I was. I tried to get him here. It was funny because it was a really awkward show because it was early on. Maybe what show was the Edgar Bro show, bro? 10. 10, like show number 10, right? And Ed and JP were playing together. So I'm, and I contacted, I don't know, one of them, and it's like, hey, can you guys, because I thought, you know, they'd come in together because they were doing a thing together. And each one thought that I'd contacted the other one. So Ed showed up, and JP didn't get an invite, right? So Ed, <laughs> you're waiting for JP. Well, there you go. You and I, I'm like, at the last minute, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Can you make it in? He's like, well, I don't live in Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> so he's someone that I absolutely want to get on this show because I think he's 
fucking brilliant, you know. And we can we can swear on this show. In fact, don't we have to swear? Isn't that our mandate every each and every yeah. week? We've not had a week without what explicit content warning. We always got yeah the explicit content. You know, apparently, it gives us. Street cred. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> keep that in mind. That's, 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 that's what the kids are all about uh, these days. That banjos. Yeah, <laughs> fucking banjos. <laughs> fucking banjos. How about, how about you, Dave? I like. You know what? I'm. I'm. I don't uh, listen to new newfangled music. <laughs> I do actually. I, I I'm I'm forced to uh, because I work in a retail environment. They got the radio on, or somebody's yeah. got their iPod on. So you uh, you have to hear stuff. Right? <coughs> And I'm really happy. You know, there's a lot of cheesy shit out yeah. there, but melody is huge right now. It's, it's, it's come it's, back. It's huge, oh, yeah. and that makes me very, very happy. I, they're all using the same chord pattern. Yeah. And like, there's 15 songs that are hits right now with the same chord pattern. That's one that I use a lot myself. So yeah. It's kind of, but the melodies are there, and I think that's great. They're could, actually singing one note, but the auto tuners yeah. reading these songs, <laughs> <laughs> warbling it all exactly. over the range. But if there's Just anybody the particularly that I hey, give me a name, uh, I nobody with a bouncy C. <laughs> <laughs> a bouncy C. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I still Irving Schwartz. All right. I should actually say, you know what? Uh, uh, the, the, the speak of the Grammys, there was one yeah. real highlight moment. I didn't watch the whole thing, but Imagine Dragons did a thing with with some rapper, yeah. and they're dead solid. I, there you they go. are a really cool sounding band yeah. to me. Great yeah. melodies. And, 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 for, and for someone to be fairly new and to break through that cynical crust of the establishment, you know, props you know, for that. One thing right? I noticed in the, in their performance, anyway, which was it was neat. It was a rap rock hybrid thing but all the old folk everybody was jealous of them there. Yeah. that was a really really intense was performance it, yeah. there's it was always great. someone who steals a show yeah, with a real did. performance yeah. and they did that <coughs> Danny how about uh, you is there any, the, anyone in the last year who's rocked your world yeah there's a couple things one is um, uh, I, I'm, I really like world music and I volunteer with Matapa this the organization that's going to be doing the Hamilton World Music Festival this July um, and we put on a whole series of stuff so I'm always discovering new world music through them um, the thing I'm, I'm obsessed with right now is this is Garifuna music. So uh, Garifuna is a tribe of people in um, who emigrated into Belize and um, from the Caribbean, and, and they're the ones who did that album with Danny Michelle. That's why I'm looking at you right now. But that his last album, he went to Belize. Danny did, and he recorded with the Garifuna Collective. Wonderful. And that music is awesome because it's got the Caribbean um, and African drum beats and the rhythms. But uh, there's a big Spanish influence in Belize, and you get the mix because Belize is bordered by Mexico and Guatemala and Honduras and then the Caribbean islands. And it's just the, the coolest mix of sounds and, um, and melodies and languages. And again, uh, what's it called for the people at home? Well, that, look up Garifuna Collective. Garifuna with a G? Yeah, with a G, yeah. G-A-R-I-F-F-U-N-A, I believe. It's with an I. I'm going to do that. Oh, sorry. Fucking Garifuna. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well played, Medikovic. Topically, I am currently wearing my Buckshot BB. You are. Secret hey. boyfriend. Lynn, Shana. friend of the show, BB. Got Here's a kick ass album. I've known Lynn for years, just, you know, around town. She's been involved in different clubs and whatever. And then I went to her CD release for this particular album. And I was completely blown away. It was honestly the best show I've seen in years. Yeah. It was theatrical. She gives a shit. She really puts it. it puts it the was, effort into it. I was actually like, I can't believe this is happening. And it wasn't completely sold out. Yeah. And I was like, <coughs> I was just really happy to be there. And yeah. It was just, for me, it was a total gem that... Uh, Okay, I'm gonna be straight up. I went out because I was like, I want to support Lynn. I want to, and then I got there and I was like, This is the so best fucking show glad I've I did. I did. The, I, yeah, did I was awesome. in the video, so I had to kind of go out. But it was like she pulled it off because it's so hard to to do that. But that's part of her shtick, right? She's really good at not only organizing that stuff, but having the creative. It's that magical left brain, right brain. I mean, there was mix. the stage show, and then there's the fact that she just nailed it. She nailed it. And, and the band. Yeah, the band, band was great. The pitch was so. perfect. The volume, the mix. Dougie Smith, you know, whenever he works down there, he does a great job. And our friends at This Ain't Hollywood. 345 Drain Street North. There's a free little plug for you, Lou. All right, guys, I want you to play another song. I want you to bring some of the joy to the people at home. And I want to feel a too. bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to feel a bit of it myself with my... We're going to share the misery. With, yeah. with me... Quentin, Ryan, and as Danny said, my grow up student, <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you 
your bass amp is on again. That's cool. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. you see that I try to keep it all from you. But if I told you I lied. Still the story to make sure I lose. Yeah, well, maybe it's me. But you play it long. If you still want to see.
Picture perfect. Fry truck here at barbershoppodcast.com. This is the power of live music. This is available to you on a regular basis. Do not deny yourself this. You know, go out, have a good time. You know, you go out and see some crappy movie, you drop 25 bucks, it's forgettable. You go out and see a live music experience, it's life changing. You know, it is for me, and it is for a lot of people, and there's a lot of people who don't get the chance to do it. We bring it to you here live each and every week. Now, I want to ask each and one of you one little simple question. You've had a life in music. What's the one thing that music has taught you? You know, if outside of the life that I have with my friends and my family, the lessons that I've learned in, in these particular walks and steps, what has music specifically, what about your life in music has taught you? Linda, start with you. I'm going to say that uh, it's just been a very cool 
way to get together with people I probably wouldn't. I would never hang out with these guys. No, just keep not. No, no, it's true. <laughs> but, it's true. But yeah, no, I didn't mean that. But I mean, quite. quite you don't walk in the same. It's, it's like a different language. Yes. That might be the only language you share with people, and I think that's really cool. I love the fact that you can be somewhere else. You can be into an, in another town, run into some people. Hey, you know, come up on stage with us. And you speak that language, that common language. I yeah. think that's like a really cool thing. And, and and that's the magic of a jam when you get some seasoned musicians together playing and they start feeding off each other and that, that energy, you know, bubbles to the surface. It's, it's, it's it, you know... It's better than sex, you know. It really is when it's when it's perfect. How about you? You need to have better sex. Yeah. You know, no, no. I've got good sex, but I got great music here every week. You know? <laughs> sex with music, actually. Yeah. Is the <laughs> we need a few extra cameras, Ryan. <laughs> what about you, Danny? What's what's a big music lesson? Oh uh, man, there's there's lots, and I won't I won't you know consume it all Give the time me one. we got. But uh, I, I think I touched on it earlier, and that is I, I realized when I started to to introduce my music into situations where it wouldn't I wouldn't otherwise deem it appropriate uh it, all lots of barriers were broken yeah. and people it just brought everybody together and it made me see people in a different light now when I meet somebody in any context I'm often wondering what kind of music they listen to and <laughs> and I can't I can't be at a business function now if there's like a milling around time without bringing music and turning it on because uh, the difference in the way people behave when, say, Beatles are playing quietly in the background and when it's just a, a stale, empty, quiet room, is uh, it's transformative. It changes the way people behave. And Absolutely. And I need to ask you this because it just came to me that this is, you know, let's talk week. This is about mental health. People are talking about mental health. And quite often the people who are musicians who are renowned musicians are the people who are very fragile, who can't function. You know, this is what they do and they do extremely well. And yet you, there's not a lot of bankers that go home and write songs or paint pictures. And yet you work in an environment where there are these people, but they still have that capacity when they are, you know, when they are touched and when they see someone who is one of them that they're comfortable with, who can all of a sudden take them to this other land that, you know, it's it's like art. It's people put up defenses and they're fearful until yeah. they're touched by it. Like, how do you find the world of the norms, <laughs> you know, working in there as far as acceptance of, and I don't want to call it eccentricity, but it's called the musical mindset, you know, and it and it's dangerous and it's fragile and it's wonderful. Um, do you do you find that people you know, until they actually are are hear the music and it and it and it, and it, and it penetrates those defenses, is there any chance of them being open to it, or do they actually have to hear it first? Oh, I think it depends. There's, I'm, I'm always blown away when I meet people who are sort of not interested in music. It's yeah. like, how can you not be? Yeah, interested? like sometimes you know, once in a while you meet somebody who says, "I don't music? like music." It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you want to check for a pulse? And, Hello. Um, I can see if you don't like mustard. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, that's wrong too. No, exactly. it is wrong. I broke up with a girl over it once. <laughs> yeah, wasn't the mustard? Was no. Not <laughs> yeah, you know, no. Oh, you're, too, you're too quick for what? your own I'm good. My food, Linda. <laughs> Always go for the schlong joke, don't you know? It's rule 101 vaudeville. It doesn't swearing in your pocket. Yeah. So, <laughs> any more puns you'd like to share yeah. with us? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> How about you, Dave? What's your big music lesson? You know, like because like, seriously, like I, I, I know you a bit. I knew you to be an incredibly, you know. You blow me away. You're like, by the way, your musical talent. Like, you're a star. You are a star, and you are a musician. And you, you need to have better sex, Kev. No, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm serious. I've always I heard you I've, were good at that too, Dave. I've, 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 no, I've always. You don't We've do all well. heard that. If the bathroom stalls are to be believed, <laughs> no, but there's there's something to be said for perseverance in music when you believe what you do is exceptional. You know, it's good. I'm doing this. I'm making the effort to, to make a fucking CD, to write a song because I believe in this song. And all along the way, someone wants to rip that shit away from you. Someone wants to tear that confidence and that belief in what music can be away from you. You know, and I know you. And I know you're in a, in a place right now where you're probably in between, you know, is music my my calling or is it just my passion? Is this my booty call or is this my love affair? Well, that's, you know, I've, I've been uh, in the... Nearly four years since I've sobered up. 
I've come to realize that I don't care about money at all. I'm working my ass off to pay a whole bunch of money back to people that gave me money. And uh, I don't care if I make a dime from music. I love using music to help other people out. I love that. Um, but, you know, I don't... The way I look at it, uh, if I truly... I don't want to get paid for being a father. Yeah. I don't want to get paid for making love to my fiancé. Yeah. I don't want to get paid to play music necessarily. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm You're doing, doing it for the right it, reason. Right? But yeah. if I paid you to make love to me, <laughs> would that be different? Was the soundtrack that, rights involved? Last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I wanted it different from last week's sake, would that be more? <laughs> yes. Okay. And premiums. Man. You're the Keith Moon here, you know. Okay. <laughs> now, bottom line is music is, uh, it's a, it affects me differently. Like I look at, the way other people listen to music and feel the music and they dance around and stuff, but it eats me. Like it yeah. consumes me. Yeah. And I, I don't even, I prefer at work if there was no music on because I find it hard to do anything if music's Because you start to look at it like a butcher looks at a side of beef, right? Because <laughs> I do that. I hear a song and I start dissecting it. And no, instead of I just that, enjoying it. A lot of times it just grabs me and sucks yeah. me in and I'm, I'm in it. I don't even care. Uh, it just sucks me in. And Even if it's me. bad, it, it grabs you, right? Well, I don't think it's bad if it grabs me. Yeah, you know, like, good, uh, there's, good answer. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, uh, what's a, there's one tune that Art Garfunkel sings. Hello, darkness, my old friend. No. That one's on Rest a lot. Rest in <laughs> clothes in crinoline, blah, blah, blah. For Emily, whenever I may find her. I, I, I That yeah. song... No, I've got Wednesday morning, 3 a.m., and a lot of the older, old, crusty ones, original yeah. 1968 pressings, and it was always art stuff that I felt very, you know, connected with. It just, I felt Paul Simon very couched and cloying, you know, and it's like he's a great songwriter, but he is like a pickup artist, you know, to me, you know, where Art Garfunkel is the hopeless romantic. Yeah. Doom for, doom for maybe, failure. You know? And that maybe what sucked me in, but that song, there's been a few songs like that. And actually, even recently, Rihanna. And I didn't I didn't even know she sang it. But I saw a live performance of that Stay song. Uh, it's, it's, on Saturday Night Live, she played Stay. And it, it just about killed me. Yeah. I couldn't stop watching it. Yeah. And Amazing. it's it's great to know that yeah. you don't know. So your yeah. message is, is like, you know what? I can't quantify it. I know it like art. When I see it, yeah. and it hits me like a diamond bullet between the eyes. I know it. That's me. Sorry. Right, Carrie. You know, is there, is there a musical little gem that you would have to say that what music gave you or what you give? Okay. The best thing about music is the chemistry amongst the people you're playing with. Okay? So there's something different when you're playing with people, you're bonding on this alternate level that doesn't really relate to any of your other relationships. And you're all kind of sharing the same energy because you're all doing the same thing. And it's the best feeling ever. That's very yeah. true. Yeah. And it, yeah, and it's it's kind of unlike anything else. So you can't Completely even compare different. it to anything no, else. No, it's a team, but it's more than a team. And it's something that can happen instantaneous, yeah. right? Yeah, it's it's like there could be someone that you yeah. played with together for 20 years. And yet it could be a kitchen party where someone sits down and within 10 seconds, you're making that same connection with that person. It truly is. It's magical. Mm. How about you? Is there, is there kind a, of like in between Carrie and Linda? Like, so am the, I now that I've heard Carrie talk. <laughs> Carrie, Carrie's too cool for this. Band. You don't get yeah. to revise your answer. Um, <laughs> sort of the the friendships that made and and the connections make. So the, I'm fairly reserved and don't like cocktail parties where I have to go up yeah. and talk to too many people. And but bring a fiddle along and then there's music going and I can sort of sidle in and start talking through music and. Yeah. I met so many great musicians um, oh, at the West Town on Songwriters Night for yeah. JP Ren, Dan, and yeah, yeah, I met you there too, and Shelley and Ray Billing, and mm -hmm. people I still play with today. And, uh, lots of great sort of musical conversations started there, and mm -hmm. uh, for me too, that was my introduction to. And Almost it, everybody that I know and, in the music scene. Is and this is one of the things I like. I run a number of open stages, and there's always someone who wants to crap on it and say, "Oh, you're you're you're, you know, getting free entertainment. You're not paying." And it's like, I ran them. It's like for 125 bucks, I had to bring a kit and amps and guitar and bring this and do this. It's like you're not making any money, but the people who go out get to witness that first those connections when there's that magic takes place right if you go out to a songwriter's night or an open stage support the bars 
that support that because there are relationships that start there that are, you know, that form that lasts for years. And it, it, you could very well be there the night that two people meet up. That could be the next Beatles. Like, you just never know. And those are great environments, you know, open stages and uh, open mics. And Hamilton, Ontario has our, our share of incredible musicians. And we've got five of them in here at the Barbershop Podcast. We're not bringing any videos. We're not bringing any recorded stuff because these guys haven't recorded their CD yet. You're getting to hear this stuff <laughs> this here. This is it. This is it. This is, this is it. This is like better. This is better. Better butter, better cheddar, as they say. So we're going to milk as many songs as they can as the dog wants to sing harmony. <laughs> Upstairs, you guys going to throw another one our way? Yeah. <clears throat> it's called The Ballad of the Bodybuilding Bandit. Beautiful. I hear it here at barbershoppodcast.com.
Barbershoppodcast.com. Each and every week you get, well, you get some kind of magic, but we got some special kind of magic in here. I want to give a big shout out to Quentin. Quentin, that preamp is kicking ass tonight. Isn't it Ryan Cannon? Does, yes. Like, how is that sounding in there? It sounds great. If Q, you want to get on camera here. Yeah. You, we, uh, well, I can't move the camera. Q's <laughs> you got to put your face in. He's in the witness protection program. Yeah. So. He's, he's, yeah. He's, he's yet another great engineer yeah. who wanted to be involved, and he brought over a hunk of equipment tonight, and he said, I think this will make something that's sweet it that sure much sweeter. And my goodness, when you guys hear the mix later on, you're going to be like, well, we don't have to go in the studio. <laughs> it's pretty well done. No, I'm serious. Like, you guys are seamless. And it's tight. And then to have that kind of synergy when you're, you know, you're in the audience. I want to know about, you know, you got you two talk about what, what what's the future for Fry Truck. Because I'm a big believer and a big supporter. <coughs> and uh, what, what's the next couple months looking forward to? Um uh, People who are, who might see this show and go, geez, what's next? We have a few things lined up that are, um, Dan and I are doing a couple things, and we do have a gig we're opening for the Strumbellas. Unfortunately, Matt can't be there, and Carrie can't be there, so our good friend Orange McFarland is going to play bass yes, for us. friend of the show. Uh, and then March 6th, we have another gig, and who knows who's going to be there. But we're going into the studio damn soon, right? Yeah. And then are you, are you, are you going to try to do this? Are you going to turn over control and let go? Or are you going to run this show? Um, I'm not going to run the show. I would rather not do yeah. anything other than play guitar. Play but, guitar. Uh, you have to sing uh, a little bit too. Yeah, we still have to make some decisions. We've talked about yeah. it in bits and pieces for months and months. Yeah. And uh, I think we just got to go in. And yeah, and this is part of the process. When you have something together and you believe in it, it's like, okay, you know, we have to have the rehearsal, the performance. We got the songs. Now we have to go in the studio, and there has to be kind of a, a forward look. Like, why are we doing this? There has to be a reason why we're doing this. Well, we have a record of songs. Rough idea of how many tunes you guys have got together already. Dan has he writes about six thousand every day. <laughs> I know. So, it's no, like if you're got... a fr- if you're a friend of Danny on Facebook, it's like it's wonderful. Every week, it's like what another pe- fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> fucking writes a killer. He probably shit that out of his ass this morning. He goes on. Oh, yes. Here's a great song. I'm gonna go back to sleep. <laughs> uh, we have enough. There's plenty. It's not like we have to come yeah. up with more material. We've got lots and lots and lots. Yeah, well, so. we're certainly blessed. You know, I'm enjoying it. You know, it's like how how many more do you think you have for us? I'm curious at this certain point. Tonight? Yeah, because I really want you to play all night. Oh, <laughs> so how many that. more are you comfortable? We're doing at least one. But I'm, did you sneak off into a room? First? Yeah. Did you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm commercial? so I'm going to do a commercial. <laughs> so you know, I can do a long commercial. Do we have a, a Boxo Studio? Graphic that we can throw up there, Ryan Cannon. Uh, not if you want to be seen on screen at the same time, but we Whoa. can we could just fake it with your own. Just picture one above uh, uh, Kevin's head. Okay, there. over top of my head. I'm going to speak of uh, because we just started a process. We've been doing this for 15 months, and we've kind of honed it. And Jesus, I put in like five, six hours a day, and uh, you know, working on the show, promoting the show, getting it to the point. We've got Ryan, we've got Quentin in here, we've got something, we've got, we've got a product which is the music of Hamilton, Ontario, and we've got now a, a way to get it out to the people. So we're doing uh, some advertising now. We've got some sponsors. Jamie at Picks and Sticks have been great. We've got Suzanne and Chris at uh, Crash Landing, yep. who's going to be popping in next week for Philosophier. And uh, another, uh, you know a number of people, my buddy Casey up at uh, O'Neill's Farm Equipment, You know he's a big fan of Ginger St. James up in the Binbrook area. He liked that, so he wants to be on board. So we're going to have uh, an advertisement. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of commercial um, programming. We're going to try to make this a sustainable venture like anything else. But one thing we keep forgetting to mention is where we are right now. We're at Boxo Studio. And Boxo Studio is kind of like a shrunken headed version of uh, Sound City. You know, it's it, it's not exactly the most um, clean, acerbic kind of environment. But what As you it, can see from the particle board behind me. Yeah, you know, but it's real particle board. It you is. Know, just like this paneling. It's real particles. Th- th- this isn't like the kind of new paneling that you can, you can't get. The, if you try to match this paneling, you can't get it. You know, this, I don't think you can buy wood paneling anymore. No, and this is 1958 wood paneling. Yeah, you the know? good stuff. And it I is like, tell me about the acoustical qualities of, a, of wood paneling, Ryan, because because it's it's got something to be said for it, right? It's there's fibers and 
yeah. all sorts of goodness. It's wood. <laughs> it's wood. wood. Wood always sounds and glue. good. And there's, glue. There's some there's sort some of glue. glue in there, and it makes for, for, for wonderful sounds. It's so, in a panel. You know, we're not really concerned. What Four we by know, eight, I think. What we know is that you're listening to this, and you're listening to these guys, <laughs> and this is like how many, you know, what, 20 minutes these guys had, half an hour to come in and set up for us to throw some mics yeah. in front of them. That's how good it sounds. Imagine if you come in here and do a full tracking session. You want to record yeah. something. You want to record your demos, you want to record a full album, you want to do a singer-songwriter video, or you want to do a full-blown video with Ryan Cannon, who's who some of the people you've worked with, Ryan, and doing uh, videos. Uh, Lynn Beebe and the Secret Boyfriends, oh, 40 yeah. Sons, uh, Rebel Few, West Memphis Suicide, Laid to Rest, Magnetic yeah. Love, yeah. Yeah, so we've got a crew that come in here. We've got the facility, we've got the equipment, we have the love and the passion. If there's recording that you want to make, certainly consider Boxo Studio, for your next choice, Ryan Cannon video. For your next video. That's right. And uh, Hollywood videos at Hamilton Prices. Exactly. <laughs> Hollywood videos at <laughs> Hamilton Prices. I like that. You know, so we're in here and we're going to soak, like, and I mean squeeze every little bit of music we can get out of Fry Truck here. And yeah. like a Fry Truck, it leaves you satisfied, you know, and on a cold, frosty, late December night isn't it nice to be amongst friends it's to come here and January. play music right. and you guys it's are going to bless us with at least one more song right one, we'll and if you could pull another one. one out of wherever you pull that magical song that would be great but we're going to have at least one more here and we're going to bring it to you right here at barbershoppodcast.com oh can i can i plug something plug it deep yeah. so we as dave mentioned we have a whole bunch of various gigs and stuff coming up and we want people to know when our cd is actually ready um, the best place to go is the Fry Truck Facebook group. Because, and that uh, will be on a tag at um, uh, barbershoppodcast.com. We'll put that link up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so please like our page. So like the page, Fry Truck, and that's on Facebook. You got it. Good man with the bass boop. <laughs> with the devil Sometimes you gotta make a deal Though the souls you save won't include your own Your wounds may never heal And the road you walk paved with flesh and bones Turn around and find yourself alone A peacekeeping man with a gun in your hand Is this what you make of your last stand? You know the world will turn its back on Yes, they don't give a damn about any Africans Who don't have diamonds all of gold Yeah, they don't have
United Nations just took a vacation saying, boys, there's nothing here to save. So pull out all your men and let these Africans fill 800,000 graves. Romeo, how could you know the world will turn its back on? Yes, they don't give a damn about any African who don't have diamonds all the gold. I track with a little ditty about a Canadian general stuck in the middle of a genocide in Africa. Don't tell me that music doesn't make a difference. Music is a document about the life we live and the times. And uh, once again, I'm blown away, you know, that you guys brought your talent in here and shared it with us. And I'm so proud and happy to be able to share it with you out there. I hope you share it with your friends and say, you know what, City of Hamilton is incredible. It's every bit as musical as Memphis. It's every bit as musical as Austin. It's every bit as musical as Minneapolis, New York. I don't give a shit. Hamilton, Ontario, it's wonderful. And each and every week I'm blessed. And you guys blew me away. You know, it's like I get jaded. 62 shows. Had a lot of great, great, great people in here. But tonight, you guys, I think it's the best thing I've ever heard wow, in here. Guys, yeah, that's really proud. Ryan Cannon, what do you think? I oh, think yeah. I think definitely that's some of the best sound of music we've had in here so far. Yeah. It's all because of Quentin's preamp. I'm yeah, sure you know what? It, <laughs> it's like the, the songs, you know. No, it's the songs. It's the songs. It's the music. It's that is, one particular yeah, wire. <laughs> but make no, an effort. It's been unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for you guys to hear this. Yeah. So, I, you know what? I invite you people to you got a, a chance to see Fry Truck, see Fry Truck. And if they're not playing that night, who gives a shit? Come out and see somebody who's playing, somebody who gives their life to music because it makes a difference. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out. And uh, you know what? It's been a great, 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 great night. And uh, you're going to come back next week and you're going to see another great show. And you're going to come back the week after that and see another great show. But for Ryan Cannon, Quentin, and Jordan, and all the staff at Barbershop Podcast and the amazing folks here from Fry Trek, I want to thank you for coming out. <laughs>